It was chosen for treatment, one, because it's highly recreated. The mountain biking, the hiking in there is, I mean, it's probably one of the most recreated properties in the county. Two, there's the impact of the wooey, and the best word I could use is an anchor. It was chosen as an anchor to, to begin work across the county. Um, it's in an area we want to focus on, meaning that, that restoration of that ponderosa pine. We also feel that, you know, um, it's in an accessible area. So the roads were already developed from the Heil family. So there was a lot of hurdles we were able to overcome early. Uh, the trail systems offered a great opportunity for defining both cutting units and burning units. So all those things kind of came together. And um, we did a lot of science up front on that property. Um, you know, everything from determining the fire interval and, and, and you know, what that forest looked like, what we would consider pre-settlement. So all that was really cool. And, um, and the treatments began probably 13 years ago. It, it, it began with just mechanical thinning and chipping um, and pile burning. Uh, logs were removed for either um, the uh, biomass facilities or um, firewood cells. We really weren't really doing a lot of broadcast burning 10, 12 years ago. And so we were getting rid of the trees, but only by changing that, the structure. The project though, you know, really kicked off right at the tail end of the Lower North Fork tragedy. And that really was difficult. We went into a total self-proclaimed uh, hiatus. We just we shut down the whole burn program. We rewrote all our procedures and policies. We had public meetings on what should we do and how should we do it. And that was over the two years leading up to this burn. We kind of closed that door those two years and met right here, right before the burn. And then it was really just waiting for the weather at that point. I truly do believe in the SMART model. Simple, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. I, if you give me an objective on that built that way, you can accomplish something. Or, or you can identify that you can't accomplish something. And so we use that model, and then we basically allow our foresters to write the forestry object, uh, objectives. Now, if there's a fire management objective, like, you know, whatever. But what we find is we could actually write a restoration objective or set of object objectives that meet both. And the, the informal objective, one that I used that whole time during the briefings was was re-establishing public trust, especially on this part. Because to me, in my small little world, it was a, a career program changing project, meaning from this point forward, we now have re-established the beginning of rebuilding that trust. commitment I made to my agency administrators was that if we did not feel good about it, I don't care if we had 400 people coming out, spent $5,000 on food and equipment and stuff, we would not burn. Nothing is going to force us to, to burn. Um, so the challenges were balancing all that. And then lastly, the fuels. Easy if those chips weren't there. It was easy burning. It was flat, generally flat, consistent terrain more open stands, great grass, but those chips created such a headache. That's a lesson we can share. Think about your actions. And um, if this would have been a suppression fire, this would have been miserable. 
it would have been miserable. And uh, it was miserable as a prescribed fire in those areas that had heavily chips. So um, I'm glad we're done in there, but guess what? We're gonna have to do a re-entry, and, and I want to, but it's just gonna be just as difficult. You know, I, I think we have two more fire cycles in there over the next five to seven years is what it's gonna take to put that back to uh, where the chips aren't a predominant influence on headaches. The chips had to be in there. My recommendation, the first one would be keep it at least two chains from any perimeter line. And then the other one would be um, the, the, the layer of chip has to be under two inches. The best thing I saw was where you had grass, rock, and chips mixed together with a very thin layer of chips. It enhanced the fire effects and the fire mm. behavior greatly. And you know, mastication and lop and scatter is no different. We're gonna masticate, I'm okay with that, but there's such a timing issue. In my experience, it needs to be red needles, nothing falling off yet. And, and then you can burn it. If you do it too early or too late, you're gonna have these mop up, mop smoldering, fire moving below the surface instead of across the surface. And so you can't get ahead of yourself with these big treatments. And that's what we've tried to balance is, yeah, you guys can get this grant to go masticate or lop and scatter 3,000 acres, but we've got to be able to get in there and burn it within a year to two years. The science-based fire management program was our key relationships. It really was about having a science program that was about relationships. So we knew early we could not do this alone. We knew, I mean, we could, even if we had all the money in the world and all the staff in the world, we still couldn't do it alone. I truly believe that. And so it's, it's really the handshakes, the friendships, the conflict, the healthy conflict, um, the cooperation that drives it. 99% of my time when it comes to prescribed fire is going to meet with people and talk with them and get them excited about it. And so, you know, the, the key there is based on science, so it's factual and, and you're doing something that makes sense. And I realize you can't do it alone, man. You can't do it. Not in, not in the front range of Colorado and not after the tragic events of Lower North Fork. It's not possible. I think what we're doing is building both trust with the public and trust with the people we work with. And the comparison I'll give folks is this. So we had a similar size fire four or five years ago. It's called the Dome Fire. Um, same fuel model, same about the same acreage, probably a little smaller actually. Um, ended up costing five million when this fire is all said and done, including the forestry treatments, including the forestry treatments over the last 13 years, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants and forestry work, the uh, at least 70,000 we spent on the two weeks of burning, at least 70,000, we will not exceed even close to a half a million dollars. We will not exceed, probably well under that. Those are some really rough numbers, but when you compare five million dollars to five hundred thousand dollars, and the dome fire burned with a severity you would expect, high mortality, you know, high consequences for ecology and biology and all our natural resources, compared to what we did, I mean, you both now we achieved both a, a significant resource management um, objective a significant cost savings, a significant decrease in uh, safety issues. Why aren't we burning more?